think she's excited, but she's also a little bit nervous. <laughs> oh no. I haven't even got to Gamriette this morning. Mainly because I don't want to cry, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a fabulous opportunity. I'm going to embrace it. Well, I'm all for Christmas. All the happy smiles and the wishes And I want it all from the lights to the mistletoe Tell me one thing Is there anything that you're missing? I will keep you warm as soon as you remove that snow International. You've got to join. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to London International Horse Show. And what is Tina going to be doing today? She is going to be driving horses, not riding them. Not riding them. Uh, them. Yeah, yeah. Although when we were going around earlier and someone was chatting about talking about boys, weren't they? And you got a bit nervous because they said the, the, the carriage tipped over totally and then the ponies went galloping off afterwards. So yeah. are you they excited for her? Are you excited for her to be doing it? Well, I'm gonna have to. And then Tina and I are going on a live zone later um, to try and not make it into myself. You'll be fine because there'll be plenty of questions yeah. thrown at you. Yeah. And you've got lots of stories to tell and you always laugh yeah. and make the audience laugh with you. So here we are, back to Tina. So a quick little interlude guys to say a great big thank you to London Hall Show for kindly inviting me up to take part in the Lemur Driving Masterclass. It was such an honour to do it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, I have very much enjoyed watching the footage back. But I did just want to pop in quickly and explain ever so briefly why the vlog content is maybe not quite the normal Tina London International Hall Show style vlog content that it has been year in year out ever since probably about 2017 18 we've definitely been going for a long long time now and it is a highlight of the year for me and i do feel very fortunate and very lucky to work and collaborate with them now and to get the opportunities that they very kindly give me i'm basically leading on to say that sadly when i arrived at london hall show on the friday literally within an hour within an hour within 10 minutes of me setting foot in the door on the premises i did have a very sad phone call from rob to inform me that his dad had sadly passed away like a few minutes earlier and obviously i was in london rob was in cornwall and as much as now looking back and even within a day or two later we you know you do realize that it was a release for Winston himself, bless him, because he had been struggling for quite a little while. Um, it just felt awful that I wasn't there with him and I wasn't there for him. And I've, we, I have i don't know how long, some of you may know from following the channel that we did live with him. He was a huge part of our lives. Um, I've lived with him, gosh, for 13 years. So he was like a daddy to me uh, for lots of those years. And then on in the latter years, I have, I have spent or we have spent quite a bit of time caring for him. So I felt incredibly bad for not being there. But as much as he had been poorly for a little while, we didn't quite expect it to go escalate that much further that quickly. But the positive of that is that he was no longer suffering. So anyway, I don't want to go into that too much. I just wanted to explain ever so slightly my reasonings. For maybe if you saw me at London, if I wasn't my happy, smiley, jolly, bubbly, loud <laughs> self. Um, me and Rob did have the discussion and we did make the decision between us for me to stay and do my job. And, you know, there was nothing I could do at home apart from be for him, which I felt incredibly be here for him, as in Rob, which I felt incredibly awful for not being able to be. Um but yeah he did he, he wanted me to get on and be strong and do the work that i had been contracted to do and also try my very best to enjoy it because we know 
that's what dear Winston would have wanted also um but I do yeah I just wanted to do a quick little I don't even know the words but just a little to pay my respects to him really I guess like I say lots of you will have um enjoyed seeing him on the channel over the years <laughs> he was fabulous with all our animals a lovely 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 man who will be very sorely missed and I didn't want to not not let you all know because I know I have put a couple of bits on Instagram but I know I'm well aware that a few people that watch on YouTube don't necessarily use Instagram and yeah I just felt I kind of owed it to you guys to let you know um I have therefore also since getting home from London taken a bit of time out of social media and just concentrated on being here for my family um but I didn't want to not let you see because London have very, very kindly shared with me the incredible footage that was captured of the masterclass. And my fabulous mummy and Cameron, bless his heart, at the time did also get some footage on my camera, which was very kind of them to do at the time. Saved my bacon, basically. Helped, helped me out loads whilst we were up there. Everybody that I met, that I saw and explained two was absolutely amazing so so lovely i was doing a bit of work for a couple of brands whilst up there and they were all just so understanding and so just yeah adorable really and it makes me feel very grateful to work with the brands that i do work with because it would have been a lot harder if they hadn't been so understanding i'm trying not to be somber i want to get on with the vlog because i've got a lot of content to share with you so i'm going to crack on and do that but i did also just want to say a huge thank you to london horse show for very kindly giving up for grabs as part of the vlogmas giveaway to pretty sure it was two my brain's a bit fuzzled still it might have been four i'm gonna have to check on that but some <laughs> tickets to the friday or saturday Thursday, Friday or Saturday. It will be the evening performances of next year's London International Hall Show when the driving World Cup performances are on. So, yeah, very exciting of them to offer tickets up for grabs. Oh, Pops wants to come say hello. You need to stop growing, my sweetheart, don't you? You need to stop getting so big. Yes, I I'm going to hand you over to the footage that was filmed whilst we were up at London. Poppy down. <laughs> oh no, she likes my hat. She says, Vlogmas is over, Mum. Thank goodness for animals at times like these because they sure do make you smile. Thank you for all your support, guys. As always, hope to see some of you at London International Hall Show next year. And yeah, good luck. Head over to Instagram after you've watched this video. And yeah, if you enjoy this video, give it a like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video soon too. But I think I need another week or so just to sort my head out because at the minute I am not making much sense. Big thanks, however, again to London, Dan and Alex for giving me the opportunity to drive or learn to drive or attempt to drive. Their fabulous, Poppy Stop Winding Sam Sam up. Their fabulous, gorgeous, stunning, incredible horsies some of which you may recognise from the Lloyd Bank adverts. So Tina's arrived at the stables, getting to know the horse before she starts her carriage driving today. I think she's excited, but she's also a little bit nervous. <laughs> How nervous? I haven't been able to talk to the camera yet this morning. Mainly because I don't want to cry, but... <laughs> It's a fabulous opportunity, I'm going to embrace it. What's his name? This is Ice. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's a stallion, is it? And what's his name? Oh my goodness. Are you going to be a good boy today? I hope so, because you're looking after my daughter. <laughs> Hello. I should have bought you mints or carrots. <laughs> Do you look after him? Um, not regularly, but I come to some. Oh, that's lovely. Nice opportunity. So you live nearby? Yeah. 
I know the tricks of the trade. Yeah. Oh. oh, right, so you know the tricks of the trade. <laughs> Wonderful. Not too much team driving though. <laughs> no, oh, right. You're dressed up ready. And finally, this beautiful chestnut. Mummy's trying vlogging, so it won't be up. So I think it shows you how much work goes into it. I think it means you need to be on the camera. I think it shows you how much work goes into it, and that Tina and other bloggers have taken years to perfect the art. Oh, I wouldn't say I'm perfect at it. <laughs> Far well, from. <laughs> no, but better than me having it back to the front, facing the wrong way. Well, at least it's facing the right way now. Good. So you are. Do you know the names now. of all the horses now? Have you been and seen Henry down the end, the chestnut? Down yeah. The end. No. Henry's gorgeous. And Henry does a bit of everything. He's not just driving pony, is he? No, he's not. He does a bit of everything. Dressage, show jumping, preventive. Side saddle as well. Oh, I imagine Alex looks incredibly elegant up there on top of himself. Beautiful, isn't it? A bit of bling. A bit of bling for you, Henry. It's time to get out. Right, I'm going to get out of the way. Put the camera down. They look nice and calm and relaxed, which rubs off, off on us. Yes. <laughs> their tails are gorgeous. And, and their mane. Yes, the way they have that. Look at your mane, gorgeous boy. Put you on the back of the thing. You're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to practice that. We're going to show you how to do it. You're going to do it. And then obviously, okay. they'll ask you questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we are going to comb. So you might come off and we might have to go off yeah, yeah. just so you can hang out with us sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then what we'll do, we'll put, then we'll hopefully get you to have a look and yeah. if you crash, the more the merrier might be for purpose. <laughs> what would be good to do that? Would you describe what's the good type of ride? What's the good type of ride? Uh-huh. Yeah. And it would be really nice for you because we, we can't be objective about that. We can't be subjective about that. Yeah, yeah. What does it feel like being Yeah. Yeah. And just the layman's terms, do you feel exposed or you know, what does it feel like? Not that much. Yeah. And asking it to do quite a lot. Yeah. So cool, beautiful. Lloyd is bank type Hello. horses. Hello, and look who should arrive. <laughs> but the marvellous Meg. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Amber, is this Jammy? This is Jam, yeah. Hello. So why am I in London again? I'm not in a field. Ah. Oh. Because oh, be yeah, you're going to win lots of rosettes. Yeah. yeah. Jolly good. Oh, we I like to see it. it. <laughs> How are you? Okay. A little bit nervous about this coming big horse event. Yeah. Yeah, these guys are quite posh, aren't they? They do. And there's a lovely chestnut, Henry, around the corner, who's going in with Tina as well. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't go in the ring. Yeah. Oh, I'm meant to be vlogging, and I'm just taking yeah. pictures while obviously you see they've alley. been saddled up, up carriaged up, ride. booted up now, and Tina's still in the side stand waiting for Henry. Rider jumping on the back, and away they go. It's quite exciting. All doors shutting so that they can get up. And are you doing some seated on the back, or don't you know yet? Right, that sounds good. Yeah, you have to hang off the side when you get past. Right. Hope they're non slip gloves then. driving fans, budding carriage drivers, people who are just stopping for a rest on the fence, don't move because we are about to bring you some amazing excitement here as part of the Lemieux Masterclass series. Now you might notice a slight height difference between Dan and I. I'm his R2D2, he's my Darth Vader and there is a reason I say that Dan, isn't there? Uh, yes, there is a reason. Um, when I'm not doing this as my fun time, I work on film sets doing stunt work on my own and also with horses on many films. He's just come back from Malta, that's why he's got his winter tan on him, because he's currently working, and this is a secret, don't tell anybody, I'm going to say it quickly, Gladiator 2. 
We're not revealing anything, are we, Dan? As long as it doesn't leave these four walls, we're OK. Do not tell anybody, but Gladiator 2 is currently being filmed in Malta. If you're a Game of Thrones fan, which I am, this man was a master of the horse for 10 years on Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. We're very glad the Hollywood um, writer's strike is off now, aren't we, Dan? It was very good for me. We, we had time to work on the horses because we, we get to go around the world. We did Wonder Woman 2. We fly the horses to the Bahamas. I've just been very lucky to go around the world with many different type of horses. And I think that's what's brilliant about carriage driving is you can have any type of horse from a pony to a 17 to 18 hand horse that can compete in what I do within Driving World, which is British carriage driving three day trials. Three day eventing, you can start one day eventing, two and three. And what we're here to do, and please the audience, do ask any questions. If you're interested in how to get starting, we've got some of our team going around with flyers. And we've got some, actually some of our top coaches in Anna Grayston, Sarah Howe and Minta Wynn who are floating around as well. So we've got some of our top coaches in the country. But the real star of the show, it's not Darth Vader. It's not Dan, who is one of our very, very best stuntmen. It's not even his dad, who He's the other there. day I watched in the credits for Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. And if Gerard is here... My goodness, are we going to bring Dad into this? Um, he, he's not arriving, unfortunately. He's working on something else. He's coming this evening it's to cheer me on. It's probably a good thing, really, isn't it? But we're delighted that Dan's partner, Alex, has come into the ring with the star of the show, and this is Henry. And Henry is actually very talented. He's out of a show-jumping stallion, isn't he? Is. he? Yes. And a dressage dam. He stands at 16.3. He's got a bit of Dutch blood, but he's a British sports horse. That's what we're calling him, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Now, this is very interesting. Already, Dan and Alex are disagreeing. Oh, Did you see that? She was shaking know, the head at me. And we've only just started. You. It's going to be a long day. Oh, this is brilliant. This, this is one of I our leading equestrian couples at work. So, he's a, whatever breeding he is, <laughs> Alex, we'll get, we'll get your version in just a minute. He is a very talented horse because you show jump him and you side saddle him as well, don't you? I'm just going to put the mic onto Alex for a little bit. Tell us about Henry and what his breeding really is. Um, Henry's KWPN. Um, he <laughs> show jumps. So it's a really good dressage and he has dabbled at side saddle. Although I get a little nervous because he can be a bit explosive sometimes. So um, kind of put that to one side for a minute and we um, move on to doing single driving. But what we're showing here is really great because this horse is a modern day sport horse. You can use your little little Shetland to a full-size horse. This is kind of a modern-day stamp of a sport horse. And he does, as you was just saying, he does side saddle competitions. Um, you like to go and show jumping with him. So it's not, you don't need a carriage horse. A horse is a horse. And what we're going to talk about is the philosophy of the horse and how we want him to be going, um, the correctness, the... The, the fundamentals of carriage driving, because carriage driving is slightly fragmented because we have the coaching, we have showing, we have tradition, and we have the sport, we have scurry. But the fundamentals are the same because 70% of what we do is we put them in the carriage and we drive them out, whether that's to the arena to do schooling or that's down the road. So we are under one big umbrella. So what she's doing now, she's just familiarizing him to the arena. And I'm going to, this is quite important with all aspects, riding or driving. The horse knows when you know and knows when you don't know. Now that isn't, when we think about that, that isn't the horse knows how good you are. It's not that the horse knows when you know. So she's going around the arena. If he sees something, she's acknowledging that he's seen something, whether it's the sign or whether it's something else, because horses work from pressure. There's pressures everywhere. There's pressure when we ride, we have our hands and we have our legs. When we're driving, we have the reins and we use the whip, which he hasn't got out at the moment, to use as our legs. So they are very used to pressure. So what we're doing, back to the he knows when you know, he's saying, I don't like that. Alex is correcting him in a subtle way, say, I see what you've seen, but don't worry, we're here together and we're going to continue to go through this. So he knows you're there. Otherwise, if we don't acknowledge and we're not present when we're working with horses, it escalates and gets out of control. So 
being very present and knowing when he knows things is really important. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to go to a little trot. Dan, we were talking yesterday ahead of this, putting our heads together, um, because I drive a team of small ponies, you drive a team of big horses, and we drive all combinations in between. And one of the concepts you were talking about, and this goes across all horse training, bearing in mind you are the gentleman that will train the black Lloyd Spank horses to run down with nobody near them in front of a crew of 100 people. And you were calling it the br blue tree scenario, weren't you? Would you like to explain what that is? Yes, it's really interesting. So <clears throat> what happens with a lot of people when we're riding, what we mustn't do is think, everyone who wants to get on their horse, please don't think of the big blue tree, the lovely tree that's blue with the big leaves on the side. Don't think about that, think about what we're going to do. So the first thing everybody does, because I've mentioned it, we think about the big blue tree. So that's now in our mind, whether it's subconsciously or we've actually decided to think about it. So the big blue tree represents that flappy bag that is gonna come out from the audience and run in front of the horse. That's the big blue tree. That's something that we're already, we see it coming. We're, she's coming down here. I'm the flappy bag. Oh no, oh no, oh no. It's not seeing it. It's registering it, but then thinking ahead of it. Because if we're thinking about this bag, he's now focused on the bag. His mental state has risen. And then when he sees something else, he, he, he's thinking about the next thing before you've got there. So we really need to cut off and try and get ahead of the horse at all times so you stay very comfortable. And if you notice, uh, I do the carriage driving in the other arena and also in this arena. You notice the, the professionals that do it every day, you, they look always very calm and always ahead of the game. And that's what they're doing. They're always trying to stay three, four steps ahead of the horse, which helps keep the horse mental state into what you need, whether you need him engaged to be jumping, carriage driving full speed, or whether you just want him to do a nice collected trot. So it's all that variance, and it's very much what we do. Carriage driving is the same as what we do riding, because when I, I was brought up on classical high school, that's what we used to do. But I'm just going to pick up on a point there, because for those of us that carriage drive out on the roads, sometimes when we meet you guys on your ridden horses, it's not always the happiest of meetings, is it? And maybe if you can take the blue tree theory to, to your horse as a rider, because quite often, not exclusively, it's the riders that go, oh my goodness, there's a team of horses coming down on us. That, of course, it doesn't look quite spooky to a lot of ridden horses when they suddenly see a carriage behind. But if you are calm, if you reassure your horse that the, the four ponies coming down aren't too scary, and then you can widen that up a little bit. But what we're showing here is the versatility. We've got the special harness. You might have noticed that we have the harness that's pretty much the same, whether you're driving a single horse down, pair, tandem one in front of the other, or the four horses that you're seeing going round. Why, Dan, do we have blinkers or winkers over the driven horse's eye? Um, what we do, that they can, so when I'm filming, we do a lot of filming actually without them. And it's a good way to break in because they see the carriage. But what it does, it focuses the horses forward. So they, it keeps them forward. If anything flatters on the carriage, it just keeps them a little bit more safe and secure. You'll see what we have here. These are cut blinkers at the bottom. So he can see when we go into the obstacles, he can see a little bit more so he can help. He can start to think for himself when he's going through the obstacles. So what we're going to do here, we're going to do two minutes more. We're just warming up. And what we want, anyone notice anything missing from the carriage? I'm going to pick on someone. I might have put a martingale on him, Dan. There's a martingale there missing. There is a martingale. But we have the bridging. But We've got the bridging. We don't have the um, trace carriers the on trace the carriage. Carriers. We, we did, say, Dan said, there's no trace carriers. And I said, we, nobody's going to notice until, until we saw Sarah Howe, Anna Greyston, and Minter Wynn standing by the side. So you've just seen Henry working beautifully. Now, the advantage of driving bigger horses is that you can work them under saddle and in the carriage. For those of us that drive section A's as I do, not so easy to work them under the saddle. So we spend a lot of time long reining, lunging, doing work on the ground. And it's actually quite good for your own fitness, particularly if you're exercising a team of four or five. Also, just to let everyone know, what we've started to do in the single class is a lot of cantering has come into it because um um, c competition driving horses tend to be used more trotting in the walk with extensions, medium and collection. So now we've brought canter, which helps with the modern breed. It's a lot easier. And then 
There have been some articles recently about the importance of using can to work in terms of warming up your horse, warming up the muscles, the ligaments, all these sorts of things. So what you're asking your ridden horse to do in terms of performance, we are asking pretty much the same, apart from going over jumps. You don't want to do jumping, really, when you're driving, do you, Dan? No, we don't. That's the one thing. Should we see if she can get a flying change while she's cantering? Put the pressure on her. Now, this is you quite ready, something. Alex? Alex, there's no pressure. No, she <laughs> gave Henry. me stick at the beginning. She's going to get it back now. There oh, we go. Did you all see that? I think of a round of applause for Henry, because that was a very smooth... We've just seen some incredible dressage here at the opening classes of the show from our Grand Prix international riders. And, you know, Charlotte Dujardin might be interested in him. <laughs> yes. OK, I think that's really good. I think we should... So what we're doing here, we want a nice outline. We want him correctly bend. We want him bending through the body, which he seems to be doing very nicely now. You could argue he's a little bit on the forehand, but that's kind of his breeding. Um, it is middle of winter, so he's not at full um, working capacity and muscle. So he's a bit miffed that he's been coming to do this. But this is the general shape of what we'd be very happy to do a modern day dressage test with. Wouldn't you agree? Because there's lots of talk about where the head is on the vertical and you know the modern way of a dressage horse going, be it ridden or driven, and, and we're very acutely aware because what we have in driving, it's we're really, really keen on the over track. That's what if you're going out to buy yourself a driving horse, apart from looking at the eyes and the ears and all the things you'd normally look at, making sure it's sound, it's got four legs, it always helps, is make sure that when it's walking, it over tracks, and then you know it's gonna have a really nice, powerful walk. Because the one pace you that is hardest to improve, whether you're riding or driving, is your walk. So Dan obviously is our top British four-in-hand three-a-day eventer. He's also competing today, uh, this weekend as a wild card. And the modern sport of eventing, be it one to three-day eventing, was invented pretty much by the late Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, His Royal Highness. Um, he really was the godfather of carriage driving globally because it became a sport when he was president of the FEI and the early rule books were written in over two pages. It's now over 100 pages long. So the phases translated from the ridden eventing, which of course, like jumping and dressage, remains an Olympic sport driving. We've knocked on the door of it being an Olympic sport, but that hasn't happened just yet. But how most people start is, is with a single animal. Interestingly, because there was so much foreign hand driving on the continent and continental Europe in places like Germany, Hungary, um, Romania, Poland, Poland was a very strong country, Switzerland, where a lot of the time, the horse was still being used as a utility animal, still being used in the land, still being used for transport. But also, those are the parts of Europe where they have these fantastic studs, breeding programs, where they have stallions performance testing. And for a lot of the stallions, they've just had the Oldenburg um, stallion testing in Germany. These stallions have to be able to drive as well. It was considered just as important a part of what they do, how they work, their confirmation, and they only pass the grading a lot of the time if they would drive as well. Think about the Lipizzana horses, a lot of you will associate them with the Spanish riding school in Vienna and that their fact they're greys, well quite often you can get um, the darker bay Lipizzanas as well and we've seen them, they are really um, excelling for the World Cup driving indoors. How a lot of people actually come to driving is because they've had a single pony that's been used for the children or for the family and they don't want it to go, so they, they start driving it. and. Just about any horse or pony will drive. It just is the correct training. Make sure you have expert help on hand. And don't forget, we do have our coaches giving out information round the edge if you are interested. And so driving started as a four-in-hand sport back in the 1970s internationally. So this is why the four-in-hands do seem to be quite dominant as, as a sport. But now we have these incredible single classes, and I've spotted by the side of the... The arena, one of our big single exponents, our chairman of British Carriage Driving, Andrew Council. Andrew, do not duck. Andrew Council, if you would like to talk to Andrew about how to start carriage driving, he's also a top international judge as well. He judges young horses abroad. He goes all over the place. He's got B with him today. So we've got lots of expertise around. At this stage, we're <laughs> delighted to bring in Tina. She's going to jump on board. And Tina, did drive. We will stress this isn't going to be the very first time she gets on a carriage. Give us a wave. She's 
we're really, really pleased to have Tina with us. She's based in Cornwall, but she's come up to London to help us out here. Familiar face at the London International Horse Show. <laughs> Interestingly, Tina and Alex were actually at school together, so they've known <laughs> each other a really long time. I'm not saying you have to be in, um, have a friendship that long to get on the back of a carriage, but it really helps. Tina, over to you. Lovely yeah. to have you here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely it's nice to be near a familiar face <laughs> whilst feeling a little bit out of my comfort zone, I'm not going to lie. Um, but we were very fortunate to do five minutes maybe last night as a little practice, so I will admit I <laughs> So what this I wanted before. Tina to do as an eventer and as a rider was describe how different it feels. She's a highly experienced horsewoman, but what, what is it like being behind the horse and not on top? I'm not going to lie, I actually... And it, <laughs> <laughs> it's no um, take on your driving, Alex, but I think I felt safer when I actually had hold of the reins myself. <laughs> because you just feel like a bit more... You're not used to being under horsepower without having any influence on it yourself. Yeah. I'm trusting you completely right now. <laughs> it's a word we use yeah, a lot in driving, trust, isn't it? And it's not just about being on the back. And Now, Tina's standing there quite inactively, Tina. But if you think about how hard on the back of your carriage you had Oliver and Frank like, working... Not hard enough. The World Cup. I didn't win, did I? Not hard enough. Frank, what have you got to say? Frank, now I'm just going to introduce Frank Campbell over okay. here. So I just need oh, to move Oh, Frank's a bit got quicker. some friends in the crowd. <laughs> OK. Frank is also our Christmas elf this year, aren't you, Frank? He's really pleased he's going to get me later. Frank okay. is driving <laughs> some greys to the sleigh at the end of the performances, but don't tell anybody, because obviously the Christmas elves are here. He's actually also an international driver himself, but so, a lot of us actually work with our horses day to day. What we've got here then, Sarah, so what we've, just, what we've shown you warming up is what we, we try and transfer into our dressage. And what we do, we take dressage into the obstacles. So we still want him to flow all the way through. You see how he bends. He has to shift his hindquarters over a little bit because he does have the shafts that resist him. But we want him to be looking forward and bending and arcing. And it's important he kind of thinks for himself. We don't want him to be launching in, we call these gates because they're numbered A, well, numbered lettered. A, B, C, D, E, F, and we have to do it in a sequence, oh, and we can't, once we've gone through a gate, it's dead, but we can't go through it before we've driven it in alphabetical order. <laughs> I haven't set any up, because it's um, very complicated. Yes. I can hear some giggling on the back of the carriage. You seem to be enjoying yourself. Um, so what we're gonna do, I want you to do, go and circle one, go circle the French flag, down the center, fly and change, Circle the International Horse Show on the right. Circle left and circle right. Tina, we want some expert leaning okay. into the bends, please. You need good knees to be on the back step circle of a there. carriage. Friend. I'm a bit concerned about how much influence I have over... Don't worry, you've got plenty of horsepower bend. in front of you. <laughs> Alex, Alex is on it. But actually, Dan, it, it will be really good for you to explain what, yeah. how important is the person on the back, particularly during the marathon phase? As a driver, I would say they don't do a lot. No. <laughs> but I'm joking completely. They are so in, an integral part of the, of the team. Um, as you can see, she's leaning there, so when we go at full speed, it's very important they lean out a lot, because these carriages now are very much designed to have the body weight to help. <laughs> we keep them to a minimum weight. Uh, we also work on cambers when we're not in these beautiful arenas. So I think this is going really well. I mean, I think a big round of applause for the horse there. I think he's working really well. He's Lovely a, Henry. He's Lovely a very Henry. happy little sausage. Um, just for the time, how are we doing on time? We've I got plenty of time, Dan. OK. Are you ready to drive? Don't forget, has anyone okay. got any questions? Do pop your hands up. If anyone's got any questions or in the seats, we'd be delighted. How do you get to meet Darth Vader? Well, this is how you do it. How do you get into film work? Um, Quite a few of us here actually work in the film industry. Um, I have driven carriages, teams of horses for, on Bridgerton and Queen Charlotte, Dan has done a lot. And it's great nowadays that in the film industry with the sort of very much the inclusivity, the new philosophy, everybody's involved. So I get to be a, an 18th century coachman sometimes. It's my emergency assist. Well done, now. No pressure, Tina. You've got Dan Naprouse on the back, who's genuflecting at the moment. 
Right, so here we go. First day, well, second day lesson, you had five, five minutes yesterday. Five minutes. So we're going to walk forward. So what do we say? Walk on. Try. Walk on. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> what Try. did we say? It was only 12 hours ago. I told ago. you 12 hours ago. <laughs> no, that's slow down. Don't you talk to <laughs> Stand up. Walk on. Ah, walk on. Straight line. We're going to go straight through the cones. In driving, your half halt is your friend. So if any of you do a lot of schooling friend, on your ridden horses, we use the half halt a lot as just a bit of a reminder okay. that you're going up or down Over pace. Um, use your corners and a dressage arena to rebalance. So similar sorts of aids. Round the cone. So you what we're going to do, we're going to go left now. So let's go Why we carry the whip as well. And we yeah. use the whip as a training aid and that is a, as a leg substitution. Yeah. So yes. Tina, what does it feel like? What's it feel like in the hands and through your body sitting up there behind Henry? Um, it feels far more daunting than it did last night with no audience, not going to lie. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he does feel very responsive. I feel like, is less more? Pardon? It less is more, I feel like. Less is more, listen, it's the first day, we're doing these? well. Let's go it? through the cones. <laughs> what is important, we only turn 70% of the corner. Okay. So there's a fence in front, yeah. so he knows he's kind of going that way. So we pull the inside rein and we give with the outside a little bit. Yeah, and 70%. then straightening him. There you go. I have to do quite quickly, don't I? Yes, and let's trot. So we go trot. And trot. Ooh. Good boy. We need to keep. There we go. And Straight then line. And then again. we're going to go through the cones. Yes. Okay. I, would, I, I, I could talk about going through the cones, but I did awful last night, so I can't give you too much, Dick. It looks like a sharp turn after the cones, Nope, we're Dan. good. Everything's on a curve. We're keeping the same <laughs> dressage line, same curve through the body. We hit that. <laughs> you missed this cone. Oh, I've got to go through all of them. And you've missed that one. I think we Come do on. two first, then three. We try again. Yeah, OK. Oh, we got that one in a straight you line. I was going to say, impressive. you didn't put them very straight. <laughs> good boy, Henry. And do I keep talking to him or do I...? Yeah, so it's really important. So what happens is when you're riding or driving, although your, your instructor's teaching you, there is always a private conversation that goes on with you and your horse. And that's very much so when you're riding as with driving. Yeah. So you'll be seeing there's a continuous conversation that happens. You're not shouting it to each other because you know each other well enough. So you're just Good having a nice, me. polite conversation, but it's fixing things, it's checking his speed, it's making sure he's um, active enough. There we go, that was better, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> Second time lucky. There you go. Dun, dun. And it's boy. also very important not to make it into rocket science straight away. So, you know, what we can do is obviously on the forehand now, we'd want to pick him up and keep him more engaged, but right now we're having a lovely time. Yeah. And we're not hitting the balls. So this is in our three-day events. The first day is dressage, the second day is the marathon, like uh -huh. three-day eventing. Yeah. But obviously we don't show jump, so the cones are our jumps. Okay. So how the horse goes is actually irrelevant at this point. It's keeping the poles up or the balls on the cones. There we go. Good boy. Tina, what's your contact like? Because we say in driving, the hand is obviously so important and what's in the brain goes down the rein. That's a saying we uh -huh. use a lot. The horses are very sensitive. Now you'll notice Henry has literally gone down through the gears. Alex, who rides and drives him a lot of the time and they have a tremendous relationship, many years of trust together. He was really up and working and this yeah. intelligent, gentle horse yeah. knows that he's got somebody who's new to driving behind him. If you think about what's in your hand, and those of you that ride, there's all sorts of analysis, but you're probably thinking about your seat and your legs a lot of the time. In driving, if you think about the tipping point, if you're leaning forward and you, you okay, hold this right quite a good different. test, <laughs> hold, on to some, hold on to somebody, and to the point at which there's the balance. Am I going through this again? And we do talk about the importance of the relationship like with the horse's turn. mouth in driving. Oh, he's, he wanted to walk. Well, he wanted to walk. Did you want to walk? <laughs> no, is that bad of me? Do I need to be more, uh, more but it's disciplined? Also, it's, it's very good. It's complicated because he's not sure because you're not oh, driving yeah. too positive. So I'm not what, being the leader, am I? Exactly. But Let's what I did say about having a good driving horse, which is any horse, he makes nice decisions. Yeah. You see, so you lost control, but his decision was like, ah, you know what, I will walk. I've had good many boy. horses that always make a bad decision. So it's really important if you want to compete to try and get a horse <laughs> that can help you out. Because no matter what your ability is, at some point, you do need a friend. And it is a partnership, whether it's driving, riding, 
Good boy, you're doing, Henry. It is a partnership. Yeah. So he just realised that I suddenly lacked concentration and questioned myself slightly. So he said, that's a good idea. We'll go back to walk for a minute, have a breather, recompose, exactly. and then start again, yeah? All right, then, so we're going to give you give this horse back to Alex. Yeah. And then I'm going to start to drive my team. OK. Does that involve me or not? Uh, it will do in a little bit. <laughs> but, Tina, in your hand, what does the weight of the rain feel like? You're, you're, you ride horses of this sort of size. How, how is your relationship in your hands and your rain? Surprisingly light, yes. Quite yeah. light. Lighter than when you're dry, uh, riding or about the same? How would you say it's different? I guess maybe the, about the same as my horse on a good day, but, <laughs> yeah, he definitely feels lighter than my horse in the hand, which, yeah, just so responsive and... Yeah, that's very amazing. interesting. Amazing, yeah. It's amazing how they just trust somebody new as well. And are you, as a rider, sitting there moving with your body? Because quite often when somebody rides, uh, is a rider and gets on the carriage, they find themselves moving their lower leg and gesticulating. On those side of turns, I definitely felt like I needed to use my inside leg. <laughs> but couldn't. OK. <laughs> but, yeah, no, that was brilliant. Thank you, Henry. Welcome. Well, congratulations, Satina. That's very brave in front no, of everybody cool. here at the London International Horse Show. Thank you. Good boy. Tara. I think a round of applause for <laughs> Tina Wallace. Thank you very much for being our brave guinea pig, Thank new you. to driving. Bye. We're a very welcoming sport and we love to have new people coming in, so let's hope we've got at least one convert today. Any questions from anybody whilst we're here? In the meantime, this isn't the same four horses that Dan's actually driving in the World Cup last night and later on this evening. We're on just, just before relax. six o'clock. So what I'm doing here, I'm just going to warm them up gently. Um, this team is the team I use for the Europeans. Uh, we finished 14th in the World Championships. Um, these are Arabo Frisians, so they're Frisians with 12 to 25% blood in them. Um, they're not 100% set up for dressage right now because I don't have a dressage carriage. And also I have dragged them out of non-work in the last three weeks. So we're not going to be doing our best dressage test, but they're pleasant enough, they're really nice. And what I'm doing here is just, you can see, so I bring my wheelers across and I use the traces to activate the inside horse. Can you see him there go through? He just dropped. There he goes. I keep the, tr the trace on him, which is like a leg. And you see, he, he, he elevates himself and he drops a little bit. So the left horse is an older horse, he's done plenty of this, and he is now teaching the horse on the right, which is a youngster, they've only been together for last season. So he's a little bit more protective of himself in here, but he's doing a lovely job, I think. Actually, the two right horses, front and back, are full brothers. So they are keeping it in the family. The one at the front's more of a princess. So, what we're doing here, I'm just warming up gently. And what I'm going to ask for now, I'm going to ask for a little... No, I'm not, because no, I'm there's no room there. In a minute, when I come up the other side, I'm going to ask for a shoulder in from the leaders. I just want them to come off, off track a little bit. And that helps generate a little bit more impulsion. You're hearing Dan mention their wheelers and leaders, and so the two horses behind, the pair of horses behind, and we use the term pair a lot in driving, they're called the wheelers because quite literally they are the closest to the wheels. The two in front are called the leaders, and that's the term, terms we use a lot in driving. Can you see there? He's getting a little bit more powered up. And then we just let him relax, and he comes through. Dan, you've trained many, many horses in your long career for sport and for professional means. And you mentioned when you first got the Arabo Frisians that you really enjoyed their work ethic and their trainability. What did you mean by that? Um, what? Because I, I do turn up a little bit late, because I this is not my living, unfortunately. Uh, I make my living through horses, through riding more than driving. Oh. -ho. Hey, look at him. He's a lively old chap. I think he's seen himself on the camera. He likes it. Um, they're very trainable. They're very consistent. Um, a lot of other people use um, KWPN uh, Tugendpark, which is a driving horse, which has a lot of movement. 
but also very complicated. And I would say you have to take a run up to the competition where these horses are quite settled. They came in here yesterday and they haven't done anything particularly of any note. And you can see, I think they seem to be going quite pleasantly enough. Talk a lot also about temperament um, when you're looking for a driving horse. I, I spoke about the importance of the walk and the, pa the paces. Similar comments that you would look for anything. You can drive any horse, but if you want to have a performance horse, an athlete, you will be looking for certain traits. But it very much depends what you want to do. But the attitude is good because you, you have to have a horse that's got independence, but trust and willingness. And those are parts of the relationships that build up over time. What we also love in driving is there's very much a community spirit. It's not just about having extra people on the carriage. But if you look at the teams of people around our elite athletes, Dan, Boyd, um, Ice Brown Coos, that we've got Marika and Georg that we've got in the World Cup. They, they use their families, aunts, uncles, children. You need a huge number of people. So if you want to get involved in driving, you don't even drive yourself. There's always a place Odin. for you to be Odin. part of just the helping crew on the ground, a bit platting, loading carriages, cleaning harness. We're very welcoming in the driving uh, community. Okay, Alex, if you walk away from, from the obstacle, and if Tina wants to jump on the back of my carriage. Yeah. <laughs> now, everyone, hold on to your hats a little bit, because Dan's going to pick it up, and you will get a sense of the speed and Did the I power. Have you moving forward enough? I have to be careful. I won't go full speed because there's a lovely horse jumping out there and I don't really want to upset the horse out there. So we're going to do a little bit more technical. So I'm going to wrap around here. So I take the left rein and left rein again. And then we just go, good boys, good boys. Get, 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 get. Nice and slowly and then open them up and come the other way. Thank you very much. I mean, a little round of applause would be good for the ponies. Thank you. And then we go the other way. And I'm going to go, put this rain, come, come. And you'll see the leaders will go into the gap and the wheelers keep the space for the carriage. Come on, come on. There we go. And then straight up and get. And we go this way. And then we can go this way. And then we're going to go this way. Now, Frank's doubling up as what we call the bottom step, so he's the one, and... I think we hit the cone. If you're going to hit it, we hit it, good and proper. But when you've got four horses like this, you've got the different points of articulation, and that's why you can wrap the turnout round. Dan, how long would you, is the overall length of a horse four like this? I would say it's going on to... It's got to be yeah. 12 yeah. metres, isn't it's, it? 30 it's foot? up to 12 metres long. Now, that is an incredible yeah, length an to wrap so round. Like, the you're... carriage width, the I'm wheel width, is 125 centimetres on these marathon carriages, and that's a standard width for outdoor marathons and for the Indoor World Cup. The width between the gaps, between the gates, when we've got the World Cup going, that's 3.5 metres. On the, on the cones, it's 1.9 to 2 metres. So that gives you an idea that when you've got something that's as long as it is, look at the length of that. Oh, Tina. Hold on tight. Oh, goodness. This is incredible. What a treat. This is a lot of horsepower. So It is a lot of horsepower. Horses. That's the back horses. Hold it in there, we have buckles that in hold it together. In old-fashioned terms, we used to say that the weight in your hands was about okay. seven pounds per horse. And are these emergency brakes? Yes, we don't need them unless it goes really wrong. <laughs> OK. OK, stand up, walk on. Tina's first question, where are the brakes? So, let's go Actually, left. it's quite an intelligent question because the pedals next to her feet, front and back brakes. And then you just gradually release it? Or... Release that loop now? Yeah. Just let it go. I need more let fingers. It go. Just let it go. Oh, okay. Let it slip through. That's... If take you it, get a chance to loop. see the close-ups of the drivers, and this is what we do with the loops. If you're really traditional, you drive with what we call a coachman's or hand, and that's when you don't have the reins clamped together like this. But for the purposes of certainly competitions and doing the turns at speed, the reins are always clamped together, just so you don't drop a rein. Do I need more of a contact? 
Back in the day when sure? driving started as a three-day event, an outdoor sport, we used to drive traditional wooden vehicles and there was quite often breakages as we were driving out on the marathon. So over time, um, Prince Good. Philip, in conjunction with actually Bennington Carriages in Lincolnshire, they're still going, developed right. the modern sporting vehicle. And now we've got these Steady. incredible sort of supersonic uh, mainly metal built, but they're pretty low centre of gravity, and these have been designed. Now, Dan is now going to give his navigators later a bit of a masterclass as to how you should stand on the back. Steady, we don't need to do the extensions just yet. <laughs> Take a left loop. That's quite something, sitting up behind the four horses. Tina, what does it feel like? I think I just need to focus on concentrating right now, but yeah, it, it does feel incredible. I feel um, very, very lucky, but... Dan, you knocked the cone over earlier. Tina's just I left know. it up. That's impressive. I'm so glad you're, the, you're right there, Dan. <laughs> right, we're going to jump you on the back, and then we're going to have a little zoom round. I think oh my that's goodness. it. We're not going to go it? faster, are we? Well done, Tina. Once we get Thank Dan you. back on the seat... I stand I here. think a round of applause for a very, uh -huh. very game. Tina Wallace, yeah. well done. Okay. So and as she do, said, what a lucky chance. I'm just going to let next door know that we're going to have a little canter. And then... St Stuart on the end, would you kindly let any ridden horses know we're not coming out, we're just going to pick up the speed a bit, so some of the ridden horses back there might just get a little animated. So on the state, straight... So this is where you just get the sense of the power behind these four horses. I'm just going to have a little canter around. I know they're trying out horses there. Could they just let them know? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. We won't canter past that bit. We'll trot past that. They're, they're trying out some horses back there. They're very nice. And if you come later on, you can obviously bid for them. Um, but I don't want to upset them. I'll get kicked out. But what we're going to do now, we're going to have a little bit of fun. We're just going to let you understand what it's like being on the back. <laughs> oh, they've opened up the gate. They want us out. This is the bit that we as carriage drivers all enjoy, but you must never forget your training. It's you like you're jumping and doing cross country, the work you do on the flat. All the training you can do it out hacking just as much as you do it in an arena same principles apply in driving you've got to get the basics right before you start doing this oh -ho. half halt i take him in oh -ho. get 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 and go tight, get, 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 down the middle, then we'll change rein at the end. Come, come. I'm going to take the second gap. I'm going to wrap this one, come. Thank you very much. Whee! Whee. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness, that was incredible. And come back. Come back, come back, and walk on. Thank you very much, everybody. I thank hope you enjoyed you. yourself, and thank you. And where is our lovely Sarah, who's Paul Paul? I'm, I'm right in front of you, Dan. There you are, I can see you. Much appreciated for helping me today. Well, and Dan and I go back a very long way, and I've known Gerard, Dan's dad. They've got a fantastic collection of carriages that they use for the films, and thank in you. my former life as an auctioneer, I sold Dan and Camilla and Gerard, lots of carriages. And I would say, if you're interested in the sport, it's a fantastic sport, and BC, if you could give out the website, they should contact us to join in. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you, big round of applause for all my horses and Alex's English And sport thank horse. you to the legend, who is Daniel Napros, the devil's horseman. Thank you. And to a very, very game, Tina Wallace. Thank you very much thank for you. watching here in the Lemure Masterclass series. Do look at the British Carriage Driving website. We've also got the Carriage Commentator website as well. We've got some flyers going around for that. I've just been asked by a gentleman at the side, is he too big to stand on the back of the carriage? 
anybody can carriage drive and that's what we love about it. Take care, enjoy the rest of the show. The debrief, talking about how it went, not listening in on their conversation, but letting them unwind. All the four big boys are being put away now. Very well behaved. And there you can see their Tina Bruce truck. you guys are you happy to share a mic do you know what first of all I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch microphones mine is louder and no one needs to hear my voice you heard his voice <laughs> he doesn't need a mic I'll just... <laughs> we need to turn this on first um, guys it's so lovely to have you here first of all what is it like to be here at the London International Hall Show and being on the stage it's, it's the best show of the year isn't it like it's great to be here single time of year when I come here it really gets me ready for Christmas you know I think with all the horrible mud and wet and rain we've had with all the horses get here finally Christmas feels like it's here. He's a good boy he's a lovely boy but he can be a bit sharp and fresh so we were slightly apprehensive about the first canter transition and we went round the corner and we went into left canter and for some reason he took off on the right leg not the correct leg the right leg on the left rein the cat and I tried to correct him and then we went towards the board and we went over the board and I started to panic a little bit and he started to panic a little bit and then he just got faster and faster and faster and just started bolting towards a hedge because he slipped and it made him panic and I was bouncing around on the back like a ragdoll and then all of a sudden he jumped into the hedge <laughs> you didn't realise this was going did you? No. I thought it was a little slip I thought it was just going to be a little slip no not a little slip me in the undergrowth of a Cornish hedge in the brambles and then he went and joined his ex-stable mate on their centre line for their final halt and wow. left me in the hedge. Wow. Well at least the story. All of the story. And do you know what? These are nice studs. So I tell you what, just package that <laughs> one up for me later. <laughs> but luckily things have improved <laughs> since. It took a while but she's qualified for badminton grassroots. How proud are you? I'm very, very proud. And actually, it's second year running you've qualified for badminton. Can we have a little round of applause for that? No, you've worked so hard. And I think the best thing, if you've been following Tina and Banksy's journey, is just the confidence. You know, they've always been brilliant together, but you haven't believed it. And I think now you have that real belief in each other that, that enables you to go and perform at your best. And it's been really lovely to watch Tina. Really, really lovely. So roll on the win at Badminton. Yes. Will you be coaching her through it? Will you well, be? Well, I'll be trying to. <laughs> How much, um, I'm assuming you've coached Tina in the past and had lessons together. How easy is she to coach? Does she actually listen? I'm going to pretend you're not here right now, Tina. <laughs> um, uh, no, Tina's brilliant, really, really brilliant, because, you know, she comes at it from the love of the horse. And I think when you come at it from the love of the horse, you're looking for better feel. And when you're looking for better feel, the result comes later on. Rather than always being results driven, Tina's wanted everything to feel better for her and the horse. And then when everything feels better, you start winning. So it's been lovely from that point of view. We've had quite a few chats up here about bringing it back to basics. Just how important are the basics and the groundwork and the dressage before you go into eventing and before you start putting those fences a little bit higher? So important. I mean, anyone that follows me on social media will know I do love my dressage. Um, and, you know, it's so important to think about the balance, to play over poles, everything, because really, as you said in your last vlog, then the jumps are just in the way. You know, if, if your canter's great, the balance is great, and you've got a good line, then really the jump happens underneath you. So, so important. Is that advice you'd give to someone starting out? We all want to jump the big jumps. We all want to go as high as we possibly can. But in reality, you're probably going to come crash down a lot quicker than if you start slowly and, and build it up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think it's important to work closely with a coach because then they can enable you along the process. That's really, really important as you're starting off. 
and then being really honest with yourself, with your confidence from you and the horse. You know, did you come away from that session feeling challenged? If not, well then maybe now you could step up a little bit. If you're still coming away from a session thinking, oh God, I had a bit of my heart in my mouth, well then no, we're not ready to. And I think that's always been my advice for people wanting to step up a level as well. You know, it's always, is that level boring yet? When the level's boring, you should step up because complacency leads to problems. But when the level isn't boring yet, stay at the level. As a coach, it can be a bit rough at times. <laughs> He's a bit of a perfectionist, which I'm not. But actually, to be fair, over the last couple of years, He's helped myself believe in my confidence, no end. Um, it's lovely when I see him ride my horse as well, because I think that gives you more belief. And yeah, he's, he's, he's fab. I mean, he won't settle for less than almost perfect. <laughs> but it, it helps you strive for more, doesn't it? Yeah, it definitely helps you strive for more. How much has this kind of combination between the two of you been helping you out with your eventing? I mean, it's good that we're friends as well as like instructor and pupil, but yeah, what would you say? Yeah, no, I definitely think so. I think um, having a relationship with your clients is great because then you understand, you know, if they're going through something, okay, then maybe that's why they're perhaps not riding at their best today. You know, I think that's a really important thing to have that coach rider relationship. And my relationship with every pupil would be very different, you know. But I think it's important as a coach to be aware of what's going on in people's lives because that goes straight to the horse. Yeah, I can imagine seeing someone getting, getting the feeling that you've got must, and you help get them there. It's just amazing. Do you know, I want to come back to you and, and your blogging and your social media and everything that you do alongside the horses. We know that if you have a horse, it's a lot of hard work. Then to be putting it out on social media, how do you cope with having to show the real side of it as well as the good side. You're very good at showing both sides of it. How, how much confidence do you have putting a post up like that? I think I've always shared the highs and the lows, always, like, like I say, the, the, the first one day event was disastrous. Um, and I think it is important that we do always share that, however, not to dwell on it, because I think I've learned more so over the last couple of years that although it's good to share the lows as well, and it is important for others to see that not every day is a good day and it is relatable and it does help others who are having problems, you've also got to erase it from your mind in order for you to move forward and progress, because otherwise you do, if you keep replaying the same problems in your head, it's almost muscle memory, isn't it? You start to feel that's always going to happen. You do need to focus more on the positives and make sure that going into your next event that you are taking away from previous events what's gone well and not just always focusing on the bits that didn't quite go so well. Well, how many people here like seeing the bits that actually don't go so well? By show of hands. <laughs> yeah. I think we all like to see that side of things. I mean, no, we know Laura Collett often puts it up as well. <laughs> 52 coming back. I don't know if any of you guys saw that video. Very entertaining. Very entertaining. <laughs> I watched it an unhealthy number of times. And you're more likely to watch that than you are a brilliant round. Yeah, yeah, it is very, very true. But I just think as well for your own, as much as it's good to share it, you need to share it. If it's been disastrously bad, yeah. you're welcome to share it, but then you do still, for your own head and your own progression, need to make sure you don't watch it yourself too many times so that you can move on from it. How many times has Tina showed one of your lessons on, on her YouTube or her Instagram? So Tina vlogs every single one. <laughs> Which is a brilliant thing, because I will go back and watch them and I'll be able to see her progression and, and actually, you know, as riders we're reflective, as coaches we're always reflective as well and, you know, sometimes, you know, if I'm coaching, say, eight to ten hours, four days a week, um, uh, you'll finish a day and then I'll go home and I'll, and I'll actually write down how all of those lessons went, but sometimes the first couple you'll go, okay, God, what did we do in that lesson? Whereas, that was, yeah, whereas Tina's obviously there for me to go and rewatch, and I think, the good and the bad. And I think it is important to reflect. You know, I'll go, actually, could I have explained that a little bit better? Could I have maybe got her to take that a step further? Or, or maybe did we go too far? And yeah, I think being honest... Yeah, do you reflect honest, on your own coaching? Yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Not, not, I'm not watching Tina in that video because I know how Tina went. I'm watching myself could I've explained it a little bit better. I mean, the only other thing is Tina does edit the videos, remember that? <laughs> We're always going to blame it on the edit. <laughs> I love the relationship between you. I've watched a fair few vlogs and some of your training sessions and you're, you can be very brutal. And I think it's a lovely sort of brotherly 
sisterly relationship where you can tell each other off and be actually really quite rude to each other in a really loving way. <laughs> Are you like this as a coach with everyone or is this just developed with teachers? Everyone always jokes that I'm lovely at the start then we get over the honeymoon period. <laughs> um, uh, but no, I think every single person coming for a lesson needs to have a very different approach. I always joke, I um, did a drama degree. Um, and no my, way. Yeah. <laughs> and my drama degree prepared me more for teaching, I think, than riding horses. Because you've got to be a chameleon. You've got to be able to adapt to different people and, and know when someone needs a bit of tough love and who can take a bit of tough love in that moment and when someone actually needs a bit of a softer approach. And I think, you know, everyone sees me coaching Tina a lot. If they came and watched eight hours, I'd probably be eight different people. Um, and, I, and I love that about coaching. In terms of riding versus coaching, if I can put you on the spot here, which one do you prefer? I'm going to sound really wishy-washy because I love horses. I genuinely yeah. have such a passion for horses um, and, and, and I love training horses. I love working especially with young horses. Um, so do I prefer riding or coaching? I love seeing horses develop, whether I'm on board or someone else is on board. Um, just very horse-centric. So I know that's a bit of a wishy-washy answer. No, um, and I've still got, you know, ambitions myself. I want to ride at five star. Um, so I've just got my own ambitions. But I like how I Tina Googled at that. But uh, I think there's definitely, you know, he will be riding at a five star very soon. Where, where do you think in your career that that is going to come? Where is the dream of, of when is that going to happen? So I didn't realise I was in such a fortunate position until now I'm in a different position. When I was 21, my first couple of horses I produced, I had one at four star level, one at three star level, one was going to go to Bramham and do the under 25s, then badminton, the other one Blenheim for the eight and nine year olds, both had injuries within two months. And then I had one at 90 and then he went three star two years later and then passed away in a freak accident. So it's sort of been a bit of a learning curve of you need to have unfortunately a few horses behind each so now i'm playing the long game and i've got a seven-year-old a six-year-old a five-year-old a four-year-old a three-year-old a two-year-old a yearling and a foal and a mare in foal um uh, wow. so uh, i said yeah i think that does take a round of applause actually that's quite a few horses and that really is one after another after another it's like having children at the wrong time and they are your children <laughs> and they all have different characters and they're all absolutely beautiful in their own way and i'm not saying they're all going to be five star horses but it hopefully just means that if one gets to a level there's something else behind it and i'm not in that situation again where it's there and then it's taken away and you're back down to the you know because you're only reliant on the horses you've got with the horses in your yard at the moment is there one that you have pinpointed though that might be your five star horse well there is an exceptional one for anyone who watches me on social media um called gatsby who is amazing but the reason i asked ros Cantor about her isaac is he is he is a spooky cheeky monkey um and he's got more jump than i could ever need his mum was a very successful racehorse so he's got in theory got speed speed and was, i went for a lesson with him the other day with someone and they said what do you like about this horse well he's sharp he's athletic and he's very intelligent what do you dislike about this horse he's sharp he's athletic and he's he's very talented um uh, so yeah but he's certainly one to watch hopefully Tina, what about you then? You've got Babington next year, but what other ambitions do you have in your riding? Because we can see you as a vlogger and a social media, but you're a really good rider as well. You can see a lot of other influencers that might not be the best riders, but you're a genuinely good rider as well. So where are your ambitions? Thank you, that's very kind. I think, like I say, over the last, I've never really had that many goals, yet it's changed a bit in the last 12 months. I think now having more confidence and self-belief has given me the want to have more goals and, yeah, get, get to badminton, fingers crossed with Banksy, because sadly we couldn't go last year after qualifying. And then after that, I think, yeah, it, it will be time to finally step it up, because he's been nudging me, nudging me to do that. And to be honest with you, yeah, we've been happy doing 90 for eight years now. We do the odd 100 when I'm feeling brave, but he's a very talented boy and I'm very lucky to have him. So I just want to embrace doing what we love, but also, yeah, push ourselves a little bit more after hopefully successfully completing badminton and then maybe as Banksy is 16 now he's currently in his prime I say but maybe in a couple of years time look at getting something a bit younger that maybe is a little bit tiny bit bigger and a bit more potential to go a tiny bit higher maybe <laughs> I feel like you need to go 
much higher. The yeah, Hans told me that when you're sat behind the ears of the right horse, it feels a lot easier. And like, Banks is very talented at his level, but we don't need to, especially at his age now, when he's, you know, he's 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 done the 90s for so many years, he's, he would suddenly be like, why are you suddenly making them huge, Mum? So no, we're quite happy he's staying at what he does, but yeah, maybe, maybe once he's let me have a sit on, a, on Gatsby, <laughs> I might change my mind. <laughs> more determination are you going to have though like you said you couldn't go to Babington this year oh so much more and going into it next year are you going to win or are you going to go and have a fun time no I will admit I may have got a little Cameron bit more saying to win. win I may have got a little bit more competitive in the fact that I know that we are capable um, I think the fact that we qualified two years on a row has definitely given me like I say the belief that we can do it and we deserve to be going there um, but my aim really is yeah to complete complete we definitely want to get through that cross-country finish line that would be amazing i'm going to throw it out to the audience in a second so i know lots of people want to ask questions but before i do that when are you guys going to get your own show Ooh, <laughs> where's jonathan <laughs> is he here today when are all three of us going to have our own well, show I think, well, so. I, I think we're a good band up here i think so as long as i can ride everyone else's horses as well that'd be great fun <laughs> Well, it's a family operation at home. I'm very, very lucky that they're still at home and mum and dad work full time, but in the morning, dad does the hay nets, mum does the feeds, dad does the waters, I muck out. Where, where so, are you? Yeah, I don't know. No, I, I do the mucking out while they do them and then I, I, I crack on and ride. Um, they're all on a holiday at the moment. So they um, all got worked um, hard enough and then about a week ago, they went out to the field and they're just off for three weeks because they're all younger horses. They haven't had a hard season. So they only are having three weeks off and then coming back in again. I think as an ordinary, I'd say an ordinary rider, a lot of people don't know when to give their horses time off or how long to give a horse time off for. How do you calculate that? Is it different for every horse or is it is it just a feeling that you get from each one? Yeah, I think time off is such an interesting thing because I think you see the big professionals doing it, but then they have maybe a 15 acre field where they can turn the horses out in five horses with all shoes off. Most of us don't have that. So I think if your horse hasn't had a really hard season, um, and you don't have the opportunity to do that, so it still has to be in its stable, maybe out and in, out and in, then it doesn't need a huge time off, it just needs less work. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, if it's having time off, but actually still in the stable a lot of the time, it's not really time off. So if you don't have the opportunity to do that, I would say it can still be in light work. And otherwise, I'd say fit it around your life, because if you, like for example, I know I'm busy these three weeks, so, for me to then go home and ride them a little bit in the middle of the week and then have another weekend off, it just seems random. So that's why I decided to give them time off when I am busy. So, yeah. Yeah, because Tina, how do you cope with all of it? You're so busy with lots of other things. How are you juggling the horses and eventing, but also with this sort of world as well? Yeah, I think, and we spoke a little bit about it earlier as well, because we did think that might be a good topic of conversation to come up. So I think, again, don't put, especially in the winter, if you're working long Rubbish. hours, the weather's awful, just remember that actually, especially if you are eventing, they don't need to be eventing fit in the winter. So let them have a bit of downtime equally. Enjoy your hacks. Get out, have a mooch around. Don't put any pressure on. And just, yeah, just enjoy being a horse owner without the pressure of having to compete during the winter months. One thing I find fascinating about, about vlogging is I often wonder, do, do you sometimes wish, actually, I just kind of want to go for a day and do a lesson and do other things without having to film it? I, do you know what? I do. Sometimes I do wish that, but then I can't resist temptation. Cam's like, are we not vlogging today then? I'm like, no, we're not. Yeah, here's the mic. <laughs> Is there anything you don't then put up? Is there stuff that you vlog that you then think, actually, I don't want to show that? No. Yeah. I do actually really show absolutely everything. Would you say that? <laughs> Cameron does Cameron. not agree. <laughs> They're going to ask why Cam's giggling so much. Where's your favourite place to event? Oh, I would say... Bigton! I've got such many...
many good memories from Victon. Always had good times there. Like I say, qualified the last two years there. And I just think the ground's always good. The courses are always fair but challenging. Dressage arenas are lovely and perfectly flat. Show jumping's always lovely built. And yeah, it's always a good atmosphere and environment. And I think we're quite, well, quite very lucky. I was going to say, quite lucky to have it quite close, but it's still a two and a half hour drive for us to get from Cornwall. But yeah, it's one of the loveliest venues within proximity of Cornwall. <laughs> Cameron, what about you? Same question. Um, I think my favourite event I've ever had the pleasure of going to was over in Ireland, Tattersalls, um, which was just such an amazing event. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen anymore. Um, but I remember going there for the under 25 three star and it was probably, I've got my fondest memories ever. It was my first time going abroad with a horse and it was just, um, yeah, beautiful event. And the Irish are so amazing. Hi, have you ever lost your confidence through an accident or just a horse that you don't click with? Did I lose my confidence or was I just rusty? <laughs> no, I've had over the years quite a few confidence wobbles and I wouldn't even say they were from anything massively specific but just through doubting ability um, but I do think that it is just very important to surround yourself by people that believe in you that can really help you and just to take like little steps at a time because you don't have to be suddenly climbing back up to where you were you you can take it slowly and yeah just enjoy the process of believing in yourself again a bit more you had any big confidence knocks or no i'll keep mine brief i wouldn't say i've had big confidence knocks in terms of a fall leading to that but i would say when your horse is when I had a few injuries of horses, I completely had a confidence knock in terms of management of the horses. Um, and I think it's, it's fine to have them as long as you then go back and reassess the whole system from the ground up and then start believing in it. And also, actually I tell a lie, I did have a lot of confidence problems with the show jumping and I had some hypnotherapy. Um, I did, and then I had to, before I went in the ring, this sounds ridiculous now, but I had to say to myself under my breath, you are amazing, you are brilliant, no, no, no sounds ridiculous now saying out loud but it really really helped for me um so yeah i completely agree with that one as well i do this exactly same thing when i leave the house you're super good i promise you're fine you'll be good at it and um, we've got time for two more questions um hi cam i actually grew up on your yard um, oh. when i was a kid um, and your auntie your mum and your grand were my biggest inspiration so i was just wondering who yours were that's oh i'm gonna cry um uh, my mum is certainly an enormous inspiration to me as well. Being an amateur rider, she owns a hair salon and has also competed up to three star. Um, so I have so much respect for every amateur out there who's riding before and after work. Um, so my mum would definitely be one of them. Um, riding inspirations, I mean you have one of them up here just before, Rose Cantor. I think she's an exceptional rider, exceptional trainer of horses. Um, so yeah, I think Rose would definitely be a riding inspiration. Alongside Nicola Wilson, I think, uh, you know, before and after the accident, her horses have always, you know, look like they have such trust in her. Um, and so they would definitely be riding inspirations. We've got one more question. We're just chatting away. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, this is a great question. That's why I was chatting away. Um, how do you cope with, like, seeing people doing things you want to do? Like, I have a, a cob that can't do the things I need him to do. I have one that's too old and one that is too young. So how do you cope, like, seeing other people doing all the things you want to do and then not being able to do them yourself? How do you cope with the watching other people? The FOMO and the, the missing FOMO. out. Yeah. yeah. Well, I actually... <laughs> there's <laughs> Love her dearly. Don't think she's here. But I actually did struggle going to Mappington and watching Meg last year. I, I thought this year, sorry, earlier this year, I thought it would be absolutely fine. I was like, yeah, I'm going to go along for the jolly and support my friends. And I got there and I saw people unloading their horses off the lorry. And I was like, mm. and literally, yeah, well, well done. Well, I think I'm pleased I went. I think you, you, you do need to still take joy from watching others, supporting others and getting enjoyment through them. So maybe if you've got friends that are competing, if you can go, go along with them still, even though you'd love to be the one there doing it, you can still get the satisfaction, the enjoyment and learn from going along and watching and being with them and supporting them. Um, and I think also think, especially if you've got a younger one coming up, like everything you're doing, watching, learning, is embracing your chances for doing it all with them in the future as well. Would you say, do you have anything to add to that? 
I think I'd just briefly go, you know, because I had the same when all my friends, we were all young riders together and we all grew up together. And then their horses, like Felicity Collins, yeah. our horses were all at the same level. Theirs then went on to Babington when, when mine got injured. So I totally get what you're saying. I think it's reminding yourself that you're a young gun on the British senior team if you're 40. <laughs> And it's, it's a sport where you can keep going into your 50s and 60s, you know, my mum, she wouldn't mind me saying this, I hope, she's just turned 60 and she's just qualified for badminton grassroots again. So, you know, you can keep doing it at whatever age and I think that's the unique thing about our sport, that you're not against it time-wise. Yeah. You know, it feels at the time, like everyone else is getting ahead and you're at home doing nothing. But you're not, you're still learning. And every day where you're not competing, you're learning. And your time will come. That's the thing that I would also, I'm going to add on to that yeah. as well, because your, your time will come. And as much as it might be hard to support your friends at this time, the more support you give them now, when it's your time, they'll give it back to you. So enjoy giving that support, because when you then get that time, they will give it back to you and they'll appreciate it so much more. So your time will come. And unfortunately on time, <laughs> we have now finished, if I can link that in. We've actually gone a little bit over, but that was so much fun to chat to you guys. Can we have a huge round of applause, please, for Tina and Cameron. And for our new show, we're going to do one day. I'm excited, Rosie.